great medrash explains to us that Moses stood in a circle, he put a circle, and he said to God, listen, I'm standing in the circle until you forgive my sister. And when he made that famous prayer for her recovery, he was in a circle. Interesting. So, Chayni Hamagal stood in a circle. Moses stood in a circle. And so did Habakkuk, one of the later, the last of the prophets, did the same thing and stood in, in, in the circle and demanded uh, and requested of God many, very, many special, special requests and insights. So, the question the Rebbe said, what's this business with the circle already? Why could they stand in a, in a square, in a corner, um, and... Um, What's going on over here? What, what, what is, uh, what's the significance of this? And I want to share with you a very fascinating idea. And I share this and I'd like to um, dedicate this po- portion of our program today to Roy Gold, a blessing memory, uh, a wonderful resident of the uh, North America community, and our Yerachemiel Leib Ben Wolf, his Jewish name, and our best wishes and condolences extend to his dear wife, Lynn, Lynn Drucker, and to his children, Jake and Max, and the entire family. Um, If you think about this, life is filled with circles. And although we typically say, my life is a circle, I'm going in circles, and we think of it in a negative way, there are sometimes um, aspects of our life that are encouraged to be in a circle, as we'll soon explain. See, let's let's first take a, a, a retrospect on the various stages, as we all know, the Jewish people t- traveled through the wilderness for 40 years. Now, the original plan was to leave Egypt, make a quick stop at Sinai, and then continue a wonderful, glorious march to the land of Israel. Well, you know what happened instead? The reality turned into a long sojourn that was punctuated with all kinds of despairing and complaints and rather tragic events that happened through this 40-year trek. It's clear to us that it must have been, for the most part, when they were not going anywhere. Because the trip from, uh, from Egypt to the Holy Land via the Sinai could have taken a, a couple of you know, days or a couple of weeks. 40 years! So where were they going? So in a sense, they were walking in circles because the main objective was not to arrive at their de- destination because if they could just kept on going straight, they would have been there already. So generally speaking, see, the, the, the uh, view, we look at the world in a linear fashion, right? We have a defined beginning and an end. We are born and then we, then we, then we, uh, we pass on. But the truth is there's something extraordinarily important about the stages of life on that journey. Let me explain. You see... Typically, we do think of life in a linear way. We have objectives, we expend time and energy approaching our goals along a linear axis. And of course, the objective is to to reach the terminal point. This is the way that most of us see our lives. We gauge success by the progress along the the path. We expect to be uh, working by this time, married by this time, owning a second house in the Hamptons by this time, so much money in the bank by that time. It doesn't always work out that way, right? Um... So we could, we could typically we see ourselves on a road, a path that leads to some fulfillment in our objectives. So while Judaism does not reject this linear view of the world, it does have many other cyclical um, elements as well. Think about this. Our calendar marks uh, the passing of days and years. And although each day is different and precious, every seventh day we come back to the circle called the Holy Shabbos. Likewise, we celebrate the appearance of a new moon, marking new months and the holidays which return, like old friends or cherished family members who come back to us each year. The cyclical nature of, of the calendar makes, us, makes many of the significant aspects of our life more of a circle than in a straight line. Right? Right now, rabbis like myself and others, we're already thinking about the return of Rosh Hashanah. Uh, I already got down my... my, my uh, my joke already for the high holidays, for Rosh Hashanah already, so don't, uh, don't, don't fret everybody out there. We're, we're the rabbis well prepared. But seriously, there is an, an important aspect of life, of seeing a life in a circle, as well as in a line. But there's that circle aside. See, the Jewish people traveling in the wilderness weren't, si- weren't simply trying to get from point A to point B, from the land of Egypt to the Promised Land. Had that been that goal, we may safely say that the 40-year journey was, uh, was a failure. <laughs> Right, a distance that could have traveled in days took years. However, 
The desert experience went beyond the linear, the goal-oriented view of history. Incorporating the circular or the cyclical approach in a very significant way. So there is a point of sometimes going in circles. See, the goal-oriented, linear mindset governs our daily life as we rush from place to place. I'm leaving home, I'm going to work. I'm going to work, I'm going to the restaurant, I'm coming home. Right? Even though we're capable of alternating or altering our own perceptions of time and progress. So what happens on a a day that we're going through a linear approach? A small delay in a daily commute is enough to thoroughly shake us up. We go, my sugar, I'm trying to get to work. The train is delayed. This is the delay. There's too much traffic. But our experience of the same travel when we're on vacation, right? It's just like a fail. Okay, all right, I'm going on vacation. Plane delay. We take it as part of life. Our perceptions become completely altered by the smallest change in a linear approach to life. But not so when we think life in a more of a circular way. See, seeing the world in a, cycl- uh, cyclic- in a more circular way is not about being without a, a destination. Rather, is to appreciate the journey itself. Therefore, in our most joyous celebrations, think about this. What do we do? When we're happy at the bar mitzvah, at the bat mitzvah, we dance in a circle. Ever thought about that? At weddings, on Simchas Torah, we celebrate the circle of Jewish life. Enjoying the journey. The journey, right? You stand there and you just go around in a circle. But we're enjoying it. We're happy. Enjoying the journey and taking the time to see ourselves as part of that circle. And our sages explain that when Mashiach comes, when the, when the Messiah comes, the righteous, which is all of us, everybody of us, will dance in the circle. And who will be in the middle? God himself. Now this, the metaphoric discussion and, and outlook is clearly to, for us to appreciate that the ultimate destination was the circle itself. So we're born, a person passes on, and that's a linear situation. We go from the beginning to the end. But in the, in, in the interim, there's the journey of life itself. And God is and has always been right there in the center, in the midst of everything that we're doing. And that is why Chani Magal, the one who brought the miracle, the miracle of rain, and whether Moses stood in a circle or Habakkuk, because there's a, an important, if a person surrounds himself in the circular of life and recognizes that, that Hashem is in the middle of his life, then everything in his life becomes one happy perspective. There's, there's, a, there's a holistic approach to everything. Everything is equidistant from the Almighty God in the middle of life. Think about this. The weekly cycle that culminates in Shabbos is not meant to be simply a destined orientation. Okay, Shabbos is ending. Oh, I'm waiting for next Shabbos. No, we're not meant to disregard the six days of the week that led to the Shabbos. Our goal should be to include the six days, the journey between the Shabbos and the next, by allowing what we've gained on the seventh day. What do we do when we come to Shabbos, the weekly cycle of life? We inspire ourselves spiritually, emotionally, communally, intellectually. And someone made an amazing comment that I will never forget about our shul, our Chabad shul on Mineola. Someone came over to me, he says, and we met at some, at an occasion this past week, and he says, Rabbi, I, you have a reputation, your synagogue has a reputation of being a very non-judgmental synagogue. And I told him it's very simple, because we keep all the, all the uh, courts south of Old Country Road in Mineola, whether it's the district court, whether it's the uh, family court, whether it's the county court, whether it's the Supreme Court, and we're north of Old Country Road. So we counterbalance all the judgments going down there to not being judgmental. I'm being a little uh, light at heart here, but that's I appreciate. And I thank that, I thank that individual. I thank Hashem that we have a reputation that everybody is welcome in our shul. It's not a, it's a shul. We all come together. We can all dance in a circle, a circle of life, and learn from each other, and be humble enough to appreciate that all of us have something to say, and all of us have something to to contribute to this world. So our goal, of course, is to include those six days by allowing them to be included in the seventh day. As we gain, we we become energized and use the strength that we have on Shabbos to impact the coming week. By allowing some of the holiness of Shabbos to spill over into our weekday consciousness, we begin to enjoy not only the destination, 
right? The next Shabbos. I look forward to seeing you next Shabbos. But also the journey on Sunday and Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. That the journey throughout the week is taking us there. The journey of life is as important as the destination. Therefore, when we read now of the story of the Jewish people traveling through the wilderness, and it took 40 years, it was not simply they weren't ready to enter the promised land. The 40-year delay was not simply a, a punishment. It was in order to be worthy of the land of Israel. We had to experience the journey that would help us grow, help us achieve the spiritual and the national maturity that was required. Therefore, they needed the time and the space to achieve new modes of thinking and new modes of experience. Circular, cir- circling the heart was a wonderful, and circulating, of course, the desert with such a heart and outlook was a wonderful introduction to the, the, the cyclical experience of the Jewish calendar and of Jewish history. It afforded an opportunity to do more than just simply arrive but how to appreciate the trees along the way. And that is why it is important when we meet each other and we think about each other and appreciate what we have to contribute to this world, to know of it, to know that the journey to getting to the goal is just as important as the goal itself because the circle of life, the continuity of life, sometimes the routine of life are all part of what makes us who we are today. And I, just as I opened with the program, with the invitation, I once again remind everyone, if you missed this, that um, on Thursday evening, June the 14th, we're going to have a wonderful concert called Songs of the Inspired Soul in honor of the Rebbe, the Rebbe's upcoming yard site. It's going to take place. Uh, many of the Chabad houses on Long Island are joining together at the Chabad of Great Neck on East Shore Road, featuring the Agnet Quartet, who will make an amazing presentation that will include also a, mu- a unique multimedia production um, of the Rebbe. And, but RSV is required, so call us at 516-739-3636 or go to our website, chabadminiola.com forward slash songs. I want to say a very, very special thank you to everybody listening and everybody who has commented and joined us on Facebook Live. Again, thank you. Have a wonderful week. And if you think your life is going in circles, it's not always bad because that allows us to see the depth, to appreciate the moment where we're at at any given moment. Have a wonderful day and Zai Gesund.